Have you ever wondered how the concept of marriage evolved in the Catholic Church? Today, we're embarking on a fascinating journey, exploring the intricate tapestry of Catholic marriage. This sacred bond, deeply rooted in tradition, holds a significant place in the Catholic faith. We'll delve into its origins, the evolution of its sacramental status, modern teachings, and ponder its future. So, buckle up for an enlightening exploration of the rich and complex narrative of Catholic marriage. Come along as we journey through the centuries to understand the evolution of marriage in the Catholic Church. Marriage wasn't always considered a sacrament. Let's travel back to the early Christian era. In these nascent times of Christianity, marriage was primarily seen as a civil contract rather than a religious ceremony. It was considered more of a social institution, aimed at fostering family ties and ensuring the continuation of family lines. Among the early Christians, much like the broader society of the time, the act of marrying was largely a private affair, often taking place in the comfort of one's home. As the Christian community began to grow and evolve, however, the church gradually started to play a more significant role in the marriage process. This was not an overnight shift, but rather a gradual evolution over several centuries. The church's involvement initially began as a blessing of the married couple. This was often done at the end of the ceremony or even several days after the couple had been married. The reason for this shift? Well, it was a combination of factors. The church, recognizing the importance of marriage in the life of its followers, saw an opportunity to provide guidance and support. By being involved in the marriage process, it could help ensure that couples were entering into this union with the right intentions and understanding. Moreover, the church's involvement in marriages helped reinforce the Christian principles of love, fidelity, and mutual respect. This was particularly important in a time when marriages were often arranged for social or economic reasons, and not necessarily based on love or mutual consent. As the centuries rolled on, the church's role in marriage continued to expand. It moved from simply blessing the married couple to actively officiating the ceremony. This gradual shift eventually led to the church defining marriage as a sacrament, a sacred ceremony that conferred grace upon the couple. As time went on, the church's involvement in marriages grew, eventually leading to the recognition of marriage as a sacrament. This was a major milestone in the history of the Catholic Church, shaping the understanding and practice of marriage for centuries to come. Around the 12th century, a significant shift occurred in the Church's perspective on marriage. During this time, marriage began to be recognized not merely as a social contract, but as a sacrament, a sacred covenant between two people and God. This was no small change, it marked a profound evolution in thought and belief, one that would forever alter the Church's teachings on marriage. In the Catholic tradition, sacraments are visible signs of an invisible reality. They are the means by which God's grace is conferred onto the faithful. By classifying marriage as a sacrament, the Church was acknowledging that the bond between a man and a woman was more than just a legal or social contract. It was a spiritual union, a conduit of divine grace. The theological reasoning behind this shift is deeply rooted in the Church's understanding of Christ's love for the Church. Just as Christ loved the Church and gave himself up for her, so too are husbands called to love their wives. This self-giving love, this total surrender of oneself for the good of the other, is at the heart of sacramental marriage. It's a love that is free, total, faithful, and fruitful. Moreover, sacramental marriage is a vocation, a calling from God. Just as priests are called to serve the church, married couples are called to serve each other and their families. They are called to be a sign of God's love in the world, to be a living testament to the power of love, sacrifice, and commitment. And let's not forget the community aspect. The sacrament of marriage is not just about the couple, it's about the church community as well. The love between a husband and wife is meant to be a reflection of the love within the community. It's a love that is meant to be shared, to be a source of joy and strength for others. This recognition of marriage as a sacrament set the stage for the church's teachings on marriage that we see today. It elevated marriage from a social contract to a divine covenant, forever changing the way we understand and appreciate this sacred union. The Church's teachings on marriage have evolved, but the core principles have remained the same. In the Catholic Church today, marriage is regarded as a deeply significant commitment, a vow made before God and the community, and a source of grace for the couple. It is seen as a sacrament, a visible sign of God's invisible grace that reflects the union of Christ and the Church. At the heart of the Church's teachings are the three goods of marriage, which include unity, indissolubility, and openness to children. 
Unity signifies the unbroken bond between the couple, reflecting the oneness of God. Indissolubility emphasizes the lifelong commitment of the couple to each other, mirroring the eternal love of God. Openness to children points to the procreative nature of marriage, reflecting the life-giving aspect of God's love. The church upholds the sanctity and inviolability of these goods, emphasizing that marriage is not merely a human agreement but a divine covenant. It teaches that marriage is not just about companionship or emotional fulfillment, but a vocation, a call to holiness, a way to sanctify each other and to serve God. For those who choose to marry within the Catholic Church, there is a process to follow. This begins with a period of preparation, which includes meetings with a priest or a deacon and a marriage preparation course. The wedding ceremony itself is a liturgical celebration, typically held within a mass, where the couple publicly express their consent to be husband and wife. Despite societal changes and evolving attitudes, the church continues to affirm the importance and sanctity of marriage. It underscores the mutual self-giving of spouses, their equal dignity, and their complementary roles. It upholds the family as the domestic church, the place where faith is first learned and love is first experienced. Despite the changes over the centuries, the church's view of marriage as a sacred union between a man and a woman remains the same. So, what are the requirements for a Catholic marriage? To marry within the Catholic Church, there are certain requirements that must be met. First, both individuals must be free to marry, meaning they are not already married in the Church's eyes. If a person has been married before and the spouse is still alive, they must have received an annulment from the Church. One of the couple must be a baptized Catholic. However, a Catholic can marry a baptized non-Catholic with the right permissions from the Church. The second requirement is the preparation for marriage, known as pre-cana. This is a course or consultation couples must undergo before they can be married in the church. The purpose is to help the couple fully understand the sacramental and indissoluble nature of their union and to evaluate and deepen their readiness to live married life. During pre-cana, couples will discuss various aspects of married life, including the sacramental nature of marriage, the vocation of a married couple, the importance of prayer within a marriage, and the practical aspects of married life. Lastly, the marriage must be conducted in a Catholic church and be presided over by a priest or deacon, and two witnesses must be present. The couple must also express their free will consent to marry and intend to marry for life, to be faithful to one another, and to be open to having children. These requirements ensure that the couple is prepared for the lifelong commitment of marriage and understand the sanctity of the covenant they are entering. The Church sees these requirements not as mere formalities, but as necessary steps to help couples enter into a successful and holy marriage. These requirements are in place to ensure that the couple is fully prepared for the lifelong commitment that is marriage. We've talked about the requirements for a Catholic marriage, but what actually happens during the sacrament of matrimony? The sacrament of matrimony signifies the union of Christ and the Church. It gives spouses the grace to love each other with the love with which Christ has loved his church. The grace of the sacrament thus perfects the human love of the spouses, strengthens their indissoluble unity, and sanctifies them on the way to eternal life. The matrimonial covenant, by which a man and a woman establish between themselves a partnership of the whole of life, is by its nature ordered toward the good of the spouses and the procreation and education of offspring. This covenant between baptized persons has been raised by Christ the Lord to the dignity of a sacrament. The effects of the sacrament of matrimony are, first and foremost, an increase in sanctifying grace for the spouses, a participation in the divine life of God himself. This sanctifying grace helps each spouse to help the other advance in holiness, and it aids them together in cultivating family life, filled with patience, kindness, humility, and all the virtues. The sacrament of matrimony, while it is the union of man and woman, also has effects that reach far beyond the couple. It contributes to society because it models the way in which women and men live interdependently and commit, for the whole of life, to seek the good of each other. The marital union also provides the best conditions for raising children, namely the stable, loving relationship of a mother and father present only in marriage. The Church thus advocates for the legal protection of such a union for the good of the couple and the good of society. The sacrament of matrimony is not just a ceremony. It is a pivotal moment that initiates a lifelong journey of love and commitment, enriched by God's grace. What is the nature of a Catholic marriage? In the eyes of the Church, marriage is more than just a legal contract, it's a covenant, 
A covenant is a sacred bond, much deeper than a simple agreement or contract, it's a bond that cannot be broken, a promise made before God. This reflects the permanence and indissolubility of marriage. The spouses give themselves to each other, promising to love and honor each other all the days of their life. Marriage in its nature is also a sacrament. This means it's a visible sign of God's grace. Through the sacrament of marriage, God gives the couple the grace they need to love each other selflessly, to bear each other's faults patiently, and to bring up their children in the faith. Within a Catholic marriage, there is also the concept of unity. This unity is reflected in the mutual respect and love the couple has for each other, the exclusive nature of their relationship, and their openness to having children. The unity and indissolubility of marriage mirror the unity and everlasting love between Christ and the Church. It is this understanding of marriage that sets it apart in Catholicism. The nature of Catholic marriage reflects the Church's understanding of love, commitment, and grace. The nature of a Catholic marriage is a reflection of the Church's profound understanding of love, commitment, and grace. What happens when a Catholic marries a non-Catholic? This question arises quite often in our modern, diverse world. The Catholic Church has guidelines in place for such unions. If a Catholic wishes to marry a non-Catholic, they must first obtain a dispensation, a sort of permission from their bishop. This dispensation is granted on the understanding that the Catholic party will not abandon their faith and will do all in their power to raise their children in the Catholic faith. However, this doesn't mean the non-Catholic partner is expected to convert. The Church respects the religious freedom of the non-Catholic partner and doesn't require them to become Catholic. Rather, the non-Catholic partner is informed about the promises the Catholic partner is making, ensuring mutual understanding and respect. The Church encourages the Catholic partner to support their spouse in their own faith journey. The couple is also encouraged to engage in ongoing dialogue about their faiths. It's important to note that all marriages, regardless of the faith of the parties involved, are based on the principles of love, respect, and mutual support. The Church believes that interfaith marriages, when grounded in these principles, can be a means of fostering unity and understanding between different faith communities. While there are additional considerations, the Church supports marriages between Catholics and non-Catholics when they are based on mutual respect and love. Marriage in the Catholic Church has a rich and complex history. As we've journeyed through this video, we've seen how the sacrament of marriage has evolved, from its roots in the early Christian era to its place in today's modern world. In the early days of Christianity, marriage was seen as a civil institution, with the Church gradually taking a more prominent role in its administration. Over time, the sacramental nature of marriage was emphasized, elevating it to a holy union that mirrors the love Christ has for His Church. In the modern era, Catholic teachings on marriage continue to uphold its sanctity, while also addressing contemporary societal realities. The Church recognizes the challenges faced by couples today, and seeks to provide guidance and support through its teachings. Throughout all these changes, one thing has remained constant, the importance of marriage in the Catholic faith. It's not just a contract, but a covenant, a lifelong commitment of love and fidelity. It's a journey of self-giving, where two become one in a union blessed by God. As we look to the future, it's clear that the Church's teachings on marriage will continue to evolve, addressing new challenges and realities. But no matter how it evolves, the essence of the sacrament, the deep, abiding love between a man and a woman, mirrored in the love Christ has for His Church, will always remain the same. As we move forward, the Church's teachings on marriage will undoubtedly continue to evolve, but the essence of the sacrament will remain the same.